Kate. She's almost got one in college, and she's got one at Moultrie Middle. Kate has also served as PTA president, school improvement chair, council chair, and she has um, also been, she's worked full time and done all this. You know, she's just a mom, one of the mom's best too. So here she is, Kate. you for being out here today. As Ginger said, I'm speaking to you as a mother and as a full-time uh, worker in a small business here in Charleston. I've been volunteering in Charleston County Schools since my oldest son was in kindergarten, and I hope that he'll be going to the University of South Carolina next fall. He's been accepted, and if tuition doesn't rise too much, that's the plan. I finally see the school district moving in the right direction under the leadership of Dr. McGinley. under our school board chairman, Toya Green, is working so hard that all of our children excel. In the last years, we've been held back by many things in this school district. The 90 mil cap, the change in the funding formula, for many years, no um, capital funding. Now we're pa facing the perfect storm. Our current funding mechanism, the sales tax, has fallen dramatically because of the economy, and now we face even more cuts from the state. This year, your children, my children, have suffered more than $18.5 million in cuts. Next school year, I hear it's going to be even worse, at least $28 million in cuts. What does that mean to your children? The superintendent showed you a list. It means potentially larger class sizes, more furloughs, cuts in arts and athletic programs, fewer course selections. I envision all of us parents walking to school with our toilet paper and packages of copy paper to class sizes of 45 students. That is not fair to our children. But there's help out there. There's $700 million in stimulus money, 82% of which is specifically must be used to backfill education funding to maintain current funding levels and prevent our school district from laying off teachers and increasing class size. That's what it should be used for. Governor Sanford wants to use it to pay down debt, and if, it, and if not, he wants to turn it down. The president has said no to debt relief, and so right now, Governor Sanford is saying no to $700 million for education and public safety. The importance of the stimulus funding for South Carolina is evident. We have an ever-growing unemployment rate of 11%, and it could go even to 14%. Our 2009-10 budget is going to come up short without the stimulus money. Okay, but how about those who agree with the governor? I've got an ongoing de debate with my very conservative father, and there's others out there who do agree with the governor. So maybe he has a point about the benefits of paying down debt and keeping our taxes down. But I got an answer to that question last night when I was emailing our state senators. I received an email back from Larry Martin, a Republican from Pickens. He made a great point. He said, the debate over the federal stimulus law is over. It was decided by Congress, and the debt incurred by the federal law is one that all of us U.S. taxpayers will bear. <laughs> South Carolina should accept the federal funds allocated to us, and if we do not, these funds are going to be distributed to other states pursuant to the federal law. South Carolina taxpayers, all of us and your children, will be required to pay the federal taxes necessary to retire this debt incurred by the federal act. And if we do not accept these funds and place several thousand teachers and state employees in our state's ever-growing unemployment lines, our state will be required to borrow from the federal government practically every dollar that will be paid to these employees and unemployment benefits. It will cost our state substantially more debt for years to come not to accept this federal stimulus fund. Even Republican U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham in Sunday's paper stated that he believes South Carolina's best interest is to accept the funding as it will do some good. If we don't accept the funding, it will go to another state and future generations of South Carolinas will be obligated to pay it back. Governor Mark Sanford is the leader of our state. Now is the time for him to take a real leadership role for South Carolina. Call the governor's office at 803-734-2100 or email him. Ask 
him how he can be proud of denying children opportunities for an education. What kind of a person stands proud in his inability to undercut children in education? It's not about politics. It's about South Carolina children and their future. Thank you.